What's up, Tech Nerds? Lottie here again. Today we are going to be going over the Bren Gun Carrier. Two things. First, we're going to rotate the carrier 180 degrees, which is really cool. And second, we're going to put the track on. Because we've already done this, it's going to be slightly out of order. Anyway, let's get into it right now. Okay, so this should be a relatively straightforward process. We have four towing points, one there, one on the other side, two at the front here. We have our crane, which is parked over there. We simply need to lift it up, spin it around, and put it back down um, because we've pretty much finished all the uh, assembly for this side, which is really good. We just need to do that side, but obviously there's not as much room uh, for movement so we'll uh, we'll spin it around and hopefully that is a relatively straightforward job okay before we get any further into it this is our crane that we use for the majority of our complicated heavy lifting she does a lot of stuff for us um, that boom is a lifesaver we've got a much larger forklift which can lift significantly heavier loads which we use for certain projects that I'm not going to show you just yet um, but it gets around quite well everything else is uh, lifted up by this which is exactly what you're going to see right now in the awesome time-lapse footage that is showing presently so as you can see uh, fairly actually straightforward job that we got done in basically no time at all simply hook it on to the four points that I mentioned before lift it up turn it around and put it back down. So um, yeah, what was gonna be a really big video turned into uh, that. <laughs> so sometimes I even impress myself. Okay. Our next problem, which canonically was actually our first job, uh, is obviously getting the track, which I'm just gonna let this play, the magnificence of rolling out a track. Did I, did I space that out correctly or what? <laughs> oh, what happened here? Oh, it's just sitting up. After a good pressure washing, it was a simple matter of bringing it up to the carrier, strapping it onto the back and using our little forklift to tow it on, as you can see happening right now. It's a little bit uh, difficult to film and tow at the same time, so you'll have to bear with the uh, camera shakiness. With both of those jobs done in reverse order, uh, we have the carrier in this position. So now we have access to uh, the entire right-hand side of the vehicle. We can put the rear suspension on, the middle suspension, and the front idler. A uh, couple of things need to happen first. Obviously, we have a significant crack, which we knew about from uh, pretty much the start. Uh, this was always going to need fixing, but it is not a significant issue. Uh, we have replaced the floor, so uh, the original floor has been taken out. Uh, let me see if I can get the camera under there, so you can see all um, new metal. Uh, so we just simply need to uh, cut that out a little bit and put a nice new weld in there clean it all up and you'd be none the wiser unless you watch this video of course uh, but the structural integrity of this vehicle is very sound she is so incredibly rigid when we put it down on the stands so it's sitting on these two quite nicely um, you can't quite see it but it's that rigid that one is not touching at all which is really cool so it's it is fairly rigid, uh, all things considered. So that is what needs to happen. Um, ooh, I'll, I'll quickly mention these. I might do another video on these um, at a later date, but I might just quickly mention it, just seeing as we're here. So a lot of people that come around to our workshop for visits often ask about 
these little dimples. They think, oh, you know, it's it's been shot at or, you know, something. Uh, one, obviously, if that was a bullet hole, it's kind of going the wrong way. Someone inside had really bad aim. Uh, there should be another one there. And if we quickly run around to the other side, run, 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 there should be... There we go. There's some on this side too. There'll probably be one. Yep, there you go, further up ahead. You'll notice the spacing is pretty consistent amongst all uh, four of those. And you can see it even on the inside. There it is. Those are, oh, let me just zoom back out. Those are testing marks. So I'm simplifying the process down pretty quickly. But because these are all welded together, the way they do that is basically these come out in big rolled sheets uh, out of the foundry. And then they're sort of, um, it's called like roll hardening, uh, roll, yeah, it's like roll hardened face something or other. Someone probably knows exactly what the terminology is called. I can't remember it at the top of my head. But as it's coming out in big sheets, they need to test it. So once it cools down, um, they use, I've heard it said a number of different ways. It's either on a large pendulum that swings down at the exact same um, force, or it's a pneumatic um, piston. It might have changed throughout the years. Regardless, a um, small point force is slammed into the metal at regular um, integers. So you got that one there, that, that one there. And then as the roll was coming out, there's probably another one um, probably actually cut out. That was where the uh, idler goes. And then there'd be another one and another one, etc., etc. Likewise, on that side and the other side. Because they come out in big sheets, there's no left and right. They just bring them out. So yeah, that's um, why you get this side, the holes coming this way. And on the other side, because again, this side is an exact mirror of the other side. Sorry, an exact copy of the other side, not a mirror. Um, they hit it on the same sides, but when they assemble it, they come out slightly differently. So, there you go. Quick little um, uh, knowledge for you. Anyway, that's not what we're actually talking about. We're talking about the track. So, I'm going to interlay some pictures as I'm talking over. I'm just going to find it real quick where we joined it, which is down here. So, these two, uh, you'll notice that there's two pins that we had to do. That was because when we did the first join, which you should be seeing the picture of it now, um, we were a track short. So we had to go to our pile of track and put another track link on. Uh, because while you can see it's off the ground, this is as tight as it would ever get in the field. So the reason you don't want to over tighten these tracks is as you're going over the terrain, these springs are gonna be opening and closing. So having it off the ground in this way, we know at full extension, this is as tight as the track is gonna get. And it still has a little bit of give. The reason you want a little bit is because you don't wanna to apply too much force to the front, um, the front idler and the rear sprocket, because that's how you can damage them quite quickly. Likewise, you don't want to be too loose, but that's another story. So we were one track link short. We could have forced it, but it would have been way, 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 way too tight. So uh, we had to change that. But um, we've actually had it spinning, even though there's no um, uh, drivetrain connected to it. You can physically grab that. I can't because I need two hands and a little bit of help from Peter. Um, we have grabbed that and turned the whole track and it spins beautifully. So with that said, um, yeah, I think that's a quick little view of the wondrous work that we've been up to. Really quickly, before we run off, um, because I know someone's going to ask, uh, what do we actually use as our track tensioning tool? For those who don't know, uh, you almost definitely need a track tensioning tool uh, not a track tensioning tool, a track tool. They just call it a track tool. Uh, the idea of a track tool is you have some sort of clamping force that brings both sides of the tracks together. So that way you can slide the pin in. 
Uh, we have these, which are not specific to any particular tank. In fact, I don't think they are for any tank. They are literally just clamps, but we've modified them um, and they work beautifully for Bren Gun Carrier track. Uh, so if you are doing Bren Gun Carrier or Universal Carrier um, or Lloyd Carriers or anything that uses that sort of style of track or even anything really um, because these uh, can pull in a significant amount of force. Uh, grab yourself some of these. They're really cool. So I know someone's going to ask. Um, we got these from Repco and I don't believe they're, they're relatively inexpensive for what they are. So if you're doing... Um, amateur track bashing it is definitely worth having i'm sure there is a proper track tool that they used on these uh, which we do not possess uh, nor do we possess any of our larger ones i believe we've got a centurion track tool somewhere but i know for a fact that they are way too big for this um, so it really wasn't even worth us uh, sort of hunting around for it uh, but we will de sorry we will be needing some significantly uh, larger track tools for future projects uh, which will include century and track bashing so yeah there we go I now now I believe that is the end of it so, there you have it a relatively uh, quick video um, just on the restoration of the brand gun carrier I'll try and get it into frame. Peter's been doing some work here too. Uh, so the next job is pretty straightforward. We just need to replicate the other side, put the suspension on, put the wheels on, put the track on, and then we can lower it down uh, onto its suspensions, uh, which will loosen the track again. And we can make any sort of adjustments. Although I am fairly certain that the track in its current adjustment state is more or less perfect, but we'll always get there. Uh, I'm looking to do a video on the art of losing a track, how um, it's easier and somehow harder than a lot of people expect to lose a track uh, while driving a tank and just the different ways that it can happen. So that's a thing going on inside my head about future videos. So um, as always, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, queries, or suggestions I am once again hunting for suggestions on just ways to make uh, this video content more palatable for everyone uh, haven't heard any bad feedback which is always good but I am looking for feedback so let me know if you want to see more of me less of me um, I hope the time-lapse was really good who knows uh, yeah let me know I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.